Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. I'm Zach. This is my fun little internet show about whitewater things. And today I'm excited to share with you my class three boater checklist. I had these checklists last week. I did the class two boater checklist, which I'll put a link up to somewhere here. And these are just things that I've done for classes, for training. I believe it's pretty comprehensive. I believe it's correct, but it could be, it, there could be more and I could be wrong. This is just my best attempt at laying out things that I think are important for class three boaters. There's more, there's your skill, there's your ability to run the river, but those are things that are hard to self assess. And those are things for me to, that are hard for me to observe for people. So if somebody, if somebody I've never boated with says they're a class three boater, this is what I personally believe are the skills you should have. And again, this is just my list, it's my philosophy. So if you think something should be changed or different, like awesome, I even better, leave me a comment down in the comment section below so I can like think about it and change this. I've probably made like 20 changes to this over the years as I meet new people and and uh, bow with new people and, and want to make this list better. So I've worked really hard on getting this list where it is now and I'm really proud of it. So we're gonna start, the first thing is where's PEPE? and understands PRE. So you wear your life jacket, your helmet, your shoes, all your stuff, and you understand PRE, which I'm gonna call personal rescue equipment. And a lot of people think you should always carry prussics and pulleys and uh, a waist belt throw bag. That's your call. Like whatever rescue equipment is important to you, but I feel like we should all be carrying some rescue equipment of our own on our body based on what type of boating we're doing. And what that is, it, again, it's up to you, but at least you understand that it exists and that you probably should carry it. Next is understands river hydrology, just understanding the basics of the river, which could be like what a hole is, how it's formed, that the current, uh, how the current is on the outside of the turn versus the inside of a turn, what forms laterals and that kind of thing. Just have an understanding of hydrology is important to be a class three boater. Next is can recognize dangers. In the class two skill list that I did previously, we talked about can read obstacles. You can see things in your way. Here, this is like you can recognize danger. A tree, that's a danger. A wrap rock, that's a danger. A sieve, that's a danger. A, a bridge embankment, that's a danger. So you can at least recognize things that are dangerous on the river. That's an important skill. Next is you can ferry and catch eddies. I would say, at least in an oar boat, you know, you can bounce your way down most class two without being much of a boater. I mean, there's some exceptions, but generally, most class two, you can kind of bounce your way down. And as long as you don't hit yourself in the head with an oar, you're probably gonna be fine. Where a class three boater, you need to be able to ferry back and forth across the river and catch eddies. And these are the basic skills to running rapids. So a class three boater can do these things. And these are things I can observe of you on the river to see if you're a class three boater. Next thing is what I would call pulling away from dangers. And I know a lot of people out there, they like to push, you like to push in the oars, I get it. Uh, a lot of class five boaters only push but I really wanna bring back an important skill, which is pulling at times. And when I, when I see a tree or something super dangerous, I never push past it. I pull my bow at that tree and I pull away from, well, I shouldn't say I never push past it, but, because I hate using never, I generally don't push past it. I generally push at the tree and pull away from it. If I see a big wrap rock, I rarely push past it because I'm exposed to it. I point at it and pull away. So this is a very defensive thing. And I feel like when we learn to row, we should learn this defensive rowing style first. And you'll see in some of these later skill sets, as we advance, pushing becomes more valuable and important. But in class three skills, you need to be able to slow time down. And the big advantage of pulling on the oars is it slows things down and gives you time to make safe maneuvers. Next is scouting etiquette. Just knowing that when you scout, you wear your life jacket, you wear your helmet, you carry a throw bag ideally. Maybe you bring some snacks or water in case in case the scouting takes a long time. But just having good scouting etiquette. Uh, next is you can swim towards a boat or shore. So if you fall out, you have enough swimming ability and fitness that you can make progress to back to your boat or back to shore. So just basic swimming ability. Next is has flipped their boat back over. So you know you if you don't want the first time you have to flip a boat back over to be on accident. You want to practice this. This is a skill. And so I would say, I don't consider anybody a class three boater until they've at least one time in their career flipped a boat back over. Uh, you should do it many times, but at a minimum, you should do it once in practice. Like when I mean flip it back over, I mean once it's flipped, you're able to pull it back over. 
That's important for class three boating. Next is can tie a bowline, water knot, and figure eight on a bite. I think these are the three basic knots for boating, and you need to be able to tie them in order to tie a rope onto your boat, in order to tie your boat to shore, uh, a number of things. So basic rope work. There's a lot more knots you should know, but these to me are the three basics. You can tie your boat to trees or rocks on shore. And so you need to sometimes tie your boat to shore. If you're just wrapping your rope around a tree and tying a made up knot, that knot could come undone, or it could be really easy or really hard for somebody to undo. You know, you get back and it takes five minutes to undo. So you need to know how to properly tie your boat to the bank. Next is tie an anchor to a tree and or boat. So an anchor is typically something you tie with webbing like this. This is webbing, or uh, we call it hoopy or other, other types of anchors that you're able to, to properly tie an anchor and ideally like a two and three point distributing anchor, but that's a whole separate topic. Uh, but this is, you may not know how to do a full rescue, but if you're the one that wraps your boat in the middle of the river and people throw you a bag, you by yourself should be able to attach that throw bag to a distributing anchor. So that's why this is an important skill. Or if you're on shore helping with the rescue, and again, you don't know how to do the Z rig, you don't know how to pull. If at a minimum you can tie an anchor to a tree, you can help the team. And I feel that's important again for class three boating. Next is experienced and accurate with a throw bag. So again, in class three, you may need to use a throw bag. You need to have practice with it and be pretty good with it. Like practice is enough. If you practice all the time and you suck, that, that's, you need to work on that. Um, next, understands their equipment. Uh, so if you have a certain type of frame or a certain type of oars, you need to understand how to tighten the oars or attach the oars, depending on the style that you're using or your raft, if it has a particular valve, you should know how to how to take that valve off, put it back on, clean it. You should understand basic maintenance so that if you're on the river and, and you something happens, you can fix it pretty easily. And you have the tools to do that same, the fixing, the fixing the stuff, fixing the boat. Next, under and there's a lot more, understanding the equipment means everything. Your dry suit, understanding how the zipper works, your PFD, understanding how to properly wear it, the whole thing. Next is can recognize wrap potential. And what this is, is understanding what a, a rock looks like that could wrap you so that you don't hit it sideways. And so having a sense of that rock could wrap you, that rock could wrap you is a class three skill. We don't want to hit rock sideways and wrap. That kind of messes up everybody's day. So that if you do see a wrap rock and you're about to hit it sideways, knowing to turn your boat towards it and pull away from dangers like we talked about before. Next up is able to repair raft. This kind of goes along with understands your boat, but you know, if a boat pops, you have the ability to do something about it. Again, you can't just go out class three boating if you have no idea how to, how to repair a raft. And finally is having some first aid knowledge. And this could be just as basic as like knowing CPR and knowing when to call 911 and putting on a band aid. That's first aid knowledge, like knowing what things necessitate an evacuation. 911 all the way to being an EMT and being able to like split people and do things so at a minimum I would just ask the people who boat class 3 like you, you know CPR you practiced it you have a good understanding of signs and symptoms that would necessitate an evacuation and or a call to 911 and uh, you you know can put a band-aid on which it shouldn't be that hard so that's my list of things this is my philosophy this isn't, there's nothing official about this. I, there's no ACA certification here. This is just over the years of me teaching and me working with boaters, what I think are important skills. And I'd love to hear feedback. If you think I'm an idiot, like you can tell, I can handle it. Uh, I'm, I'm getting good at handling some criticism online, so please tell me. Or if you think there's something I could add, you know, please add, you know, let me know. Or something, I could change the wording. I'm, every year I'm tweaking the wording a little bit to make it more understandable and and more definitive so i appreciate any feedback you have so that's it for the class three voter checklist and i'll do the class four voter checklist next week all right thanks for joining